Hello everyone, I am Dr. Priya Supaha. My topic for today is Difference between Detention, Arrest and Custody. There are certain terms in criminal justice system which are ambiguous in nature. However, they are step by step explained in law and practice. Police have power to see someone under many grounds. The modes under which a person can be seized by the police are detention, arrest and custody. Usually people get confused between these three, but they are having different meaning. The first one is detention. When the police or any authority holds someone under suspicion but have not charged them with a crime is known as detention. In this person is detained against their will and their liberties are revoked for a time being. The police have the right to detain someone if they suspect them of unlawful activities or any wrongdoing. However, the police cannot detain someone without reasonable suspicion and can only detain them for a certain period of time which varies from region to region. After the prescribed time, the police must either release or arrest the person according to the case. The second mode is arrest. Although in criminal law, arrest has not been defined, but the procedure of arrest has been given under Section 41 to Section 60 of Criminal Procedure Court. As per legal dictionary, arrest means a seizure or forcible restraint, an exercise of the power to deprive a person of his or her liberty, the taking or keeping of a person in custody by legal authority, especially in response to a criminal charge. In criminal law, arrest is an important tool from bringing an accused before the court and to prevent him from absconding. When the police charge someone with a crime and then takes them into custody is called arrest. However, in order to arrest someone, the police must have sufficient evidence, credible information or a reasonable cause about the illegal act committed by him. Now the question is, who can make arrest under CRPC? The arrest can be made either by police or by magistrate or by private person. The police can make arrest either without warrant, which has been described under Section 411 to Section 151 of CRPC, or with warrant, which is described under Section 72 to 74 of CRPC. The next is Section 44, which defines that arrest can be made by magistrate. Any magistrate, whether executive or judicial, may arrest a person when any offense is committed in his presence. Then he may himself arrest or order any person to arrest the offender. And thereafter, depending upon the case, he may even give the bail to that person or send him to custody. Now section 43, which defines that the arrest can be made by private person. Any private person may arrest or cause to be arrested any person who in his presence commits a non-bailable and cognizable offense or any proclaimed offender and without unnecessary delay shall make over or cause to be made over any person so arrested to a police officer or in the absence of a police officer, take such person or cause him to be taken in custody to the nearest police station. Now the third mode is custody. Merely surveillance or restriction on the movement of a person concerned is called custody. In criminal law, custody is a second stage of arrest. Basically, there are two types of custody. The first one is police custody and second is judicial custody. Police custody. When falling to the receipt of any information or complaint or report by police about a crime, a police officer arrests the suspect involved in the crime reported to prevent him from committing the offensive acts further. Such officer brings that suspect to police station. 
This is called as police custody. During this detention, the police officer in charge of the case may interrogate the suspect and this detention is not supposed to be longer than 24 hours. The officer in charge of the case is required to produce the suspect before the appropriate judge within 24 hours. These 24 hours exclude the time of necessary journey from police station to the court. The next is judicial custody, which means an accused is in the custody of the concerned magistrate. A judicial custody may extend up to the period of 90 days if the person is arrested in connection to a crime which is punishable by an imprisonment of 10 years or more, life imprisonment and capital sentence. And in any other case, the judicial custody of such person may extend up to the period of 60 days. After the period of 60 or 90 days depends upon the case, the person is entitled to bail till the time police have not filed the charge sheet. Once the police file the charge sheet, the person cannot claim bail as a matter of right. The key differences between the police and the judicial custody. Police custody is defined as the immediate physical custody by the police of a person who has committed a crime, whereas judicial custody is ascribed by a judge or the court itself. In police custody, the person is arrested and brought to the police station for processing, whereas in judicial custody, it is ordered by the judge depending on the circumstances of the case. In police custody, the suspect can be interrogated by the police, but in judicial custody, there is no interrogation done during this, unless the situation calls for the action and with the permission of the judge. In police custody, legal counsel is usually present in an interrogation to ensure that the suspect rights are being respected and that no physical harm or brutality of any kind will occur. But in judicial custody, there is no need of such action. In police custody, the protection and care provided by the police. And in judicial custody, it is under the protection and safety of a judge. Lastly, the key differences between the detention, arrest and custody. Detention is when the action of detaining someone or the state of being detained in official custody. Whereas in arrest is to see someone by legal authority and take them into custody. And in custody, merely surveillance or restriction on the movement of the person concerned. In detention, police only need reasonable suspicion to hold the suspect. Whereas in arrest, police need hard evidence to arrest someone. And in custody, holding a person is to further inquiry and investigation. Detention is less serious in nature, arrest is more serious in nature, and custody is also more serious in nature. The detention may lead to an arrest if more evidence is found. An arrest may lead to jail if convicted. Custody is of two types, the first in police custody and second is judicial custody, depending upon the circumstances. There is no criminal record of detention, but in, ar in arrest, there is a criminal record and in custody, there is a police record. And in detention, usually it is of short period of time that they have to either be released or arrested. And in arrest, it can be held until bail is granted or until their case comes to court. And in custody, Police custody is of 15 days and judicial custody is of 60 to 90 days, depending upon the cases. This is all about the arrest, detention and custody. I hope you liked the video. For detailed notes, you may visit my website www.priyasapaha.com. Till then, goodbye.